What is going on, people? It's Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather, here today to give you the Jewish blueprint, how to build America. That's right. Your hustling godfather has some jewels for you and also have some truth, a social experiment, and some other stuff for you. But for those of you who want to be part of Disruptive Mail Prep, the link's below. Tonight, the price goes up. So if you want to get in at 150 or one of these lifetime deals, hit that link, get in now, and you can see what's up. It will end 12 a.m. tonight. All right, let's get into it. We've got a lot to cover, and I got an appointment. So the first thing, let's dive into the social experiment. And thanks, Be Real, AKW Beats, and Raquel for being my mods to protect me. They got my back because some of you, some of those savages out there like this social media. All right, I'll jump into it. This morning, I decided to test a hypothesis. I've had a long-term low-key hater, always disagreeing. So I'm just like, whatever. So this morning, while I was working on some stuff, I had time to test it out. So I engaged a hater. He loved that. He loved that. And he just went on and on and on. And the premise was, which will be part of this, racism is not as bad as it used to be. And I'm going to break that down, so bear with me. So we go on and go on and on, and he lets loose. Glendon, you ain't always right. And I'm like, this was talking about a slavery museum that was opened up in Montgomery that's talking about the lynching of black people. I, I really didn't get where he was coming from because I actually posted this post and he just went off and he went on and on and on. And then you are snake oil, snake oil salesman. You used to put out some good stuff and bitch, I know you watching because you watch everything I do. You friended me on Facebook. I didn't friend you. You friended me. You watch every video. You're probably watching right now with your punk ass. And from me to you, I hope your daughter grows up well with a bitch as a father. So we're going through this and he lets loose and he's calling me names. Then I put up another post and Blaine comes in. He attacks Blaine and says, you know, a man with a name like Blaine. And he purportedly is Caribbean. So, you know, Caribbean people have very d distinct and different names. And I don't even know what his real name is because he doesn't have the full confidence to go by his real name on his Facebook page. He has this made up name profile. Typically, when people make up stuff, it's to superimpose their image because they feel inferior in somewhere in their life. Look it up. It ain't me. A lot of scientists agree with this. And he just went off and went crazy. Now, I asked him and now this is one of the other things I set him up. I did. Let him down this little path. It was like leading a rat by, with cheese. Here's some cheese. Here's some cheese. And he goes on and on and on. You ain't already right. Uh, essentially, we had some kind of altercation about Walmart and Amazon years ago. He remembered that. I didn't. And for the record, Walmart still makes four times more money than Amazon. Anyway, so I asked him. I sent him this question. He's like, you'll stay all selling this, 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 this. And I was like, what have you done for black people in mass? Then, like a feminized product of a single parent home, he's like, so what have you done? Because, see, when you get into fights with women, this is the one-upmanship that happens. And I knew he was going to do it. I said, well, I've given out courses and I've helped thousands of people start businesses. What have you done? Then the conversation changed because the mouse realizes I'm in this trap. Damn. He wouldn't answer the question. You know why? He couldn't answer the question because outside of his family, he hasn't done shit for black people. Not a damn thing. Nothing. So we go on and on and on. And he's still, you know, trying to, you know, woman tack is trying to change the conversation to over here and over here. And Blaine is on him. It's like, answer the question. He's like, I don't answer you. I don't listen to nobody named Blaine and someone named GC. Then he lives in St. Petersburg, Florida. But what he didn't know is Blaine lives in Florida. And I said, Blaine, how far are you from St. Petersburg? Time to go. I am not going to sit here and argue with you. Time to go. 
<laughs> he was like, oh, because he, he said, you know, if we met in person, I would whoop your ass. Once again, the low intellect purveyance of someone who cannot hold their weight in an intellectual argument. So they resort to violence or the perpetuation of violence. So he went there. And then Blaine is a big dude. And all of a sudden he had to go. Then I asked him one other question. And I want y'all to answer this question too. I'm going to give my answer. I want y'all to give your answer. Why would you follow someone, friend them on Facebook, subscribe to their channels, know everything they do on their Facebook page because you're watching, but you think they're full of shit? How I would handle that situation, there are many people on YouTube, Facebook, I think are full of shit. I'm not subscribed to them. I don't watch them. I don't pay them no mind. And then I hit them up like with the same thing. You, you follow me, you friended me on Facebook, you're on, you subscribe to my channels, bitch, you're a confused fan. I'm going to really get into what the real deal is, but please put this in the comments. Why would you follow someone you despise, you have an unnatural hate for? Please put that in the comments. So we went on and then when he started attacking Blaine, I blocked him. I don't really block people. It's just when they start attacking people, going off and off off tangents, calling names, just losing it like a child having a tantrum in the store, <laughs> spinning down and all that shit. Very emotional. Very, very emotional. Now, I hope you all put your comments in there. Um, he hates himself. I know you're going like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He hates himself. I finally figured this out. I am a pretty prominent black person on the internet. I'm really shocked that people who subscribe to Disrupt the Internet, I didn't even know they knew me, right? Well, he sees that I'm a black man and he's a black man. Therefore, if he ain't shit, I ain't shit. So he hates himself. Therefore, he hates me. And this is the most important thing. Remember how I said, you ain't always right, Glendon. This fool is spending time and energy competing with me versus going out and building his own economics. You want to know why he's competing with me? Because he's afraid to compete against white people. That's the self-hate. I will compete against your black ass because you ain't shit, but I ain't going to compete against white people or Asian people or Hispanics because I'm a scared little bitch. That's where all the anger comes from. Don't know what to do. And the part where it's like you used to give out good information, translation, when I was giving out stuff for free because he's broke. I peeped his page afterwards. He lives a very low income life. Very low income life. And it's a sad, sad thing. Now, I'm going to run up in some of y'all. A lot of y'all are afraid to compete against white people. When you say stuff like white people won't buy from me, you're afraid to compete against white people. Uh, white people don't like me. You're afraid to compete against white people. Uh, you know, they ain't going to get no black man alone. You're afraid to compete against white people. See, I compete against white people, Asian people, Jewish people, Latino. I compete against everyone. I feel my shit is so good, I can win on any fucking competitive playing field. I ain't scared like he is. And that's the pathology of self-hate. Because as we build, go forward and build this stuff out, I'm going to be having a lot more chats like this. And the whole taps are going, they're coming. Because I am fucking up their paradigm. Because, yes, racism is bad. Racism is a problem. People are dying in 2018 because of racism. True story. But I submit to th this to you. How many of you know of your great grandparents or your, you know, because you got your grandparents, your great grandparents and your great great grandparents. My, my one of my great grandparents was a slave. I know that story. Can you imagine the shit those people went through? They were killed for learning how to read. To compare and contrast that to what's going on today 
is intellectually dishonest and you're fucking kidding. When a black person could like look at a white person, just look at a white person crazy and the next day end up lynched. No, it's not great. We still got a lot of work to do. But you and I are not experiencing the racism of our grandparents or great grandparents. We're not experiencing the racism of our great grandparents or our grandparents or our mother and fathers. We're not. None of us were ever slaves. We don't even know what that feels like. And to be honest, most of us wouldn't make it because we're too fucking weak and soft. You think a white person don't like me. That's racism. We got to make them like us. Fuck them. I don't care if they like me. They need to respect me. That's what I'm looking for. You don't like me. Fine. I don't care. But you're going to respect me. That's a more important currency to me than being liked. But the Hotep Nation, the beg, borrow, on their knees with the white cock down their throat nation. I ain't part of that shit. I refuse to be part of that shit. I am going to walk with my back erect, my head held high, because I have a spear in this hand and I got a gun in this hand. And I'm going to go on that battlefield and I'm going to fucking compete. I am not sucking any white cock. I'm not kissing any white ass. And that's another reason I get hated. Because I say shit like this and I earn money and I live a great lifestyle under my own power, my own directive, doing it my fucking way. So if you are some sad little bitch in St. Petersburg, Florida, living a sub-existent life, living a substandard life, trying to do the best you can for your little girl, I hope you really turn, you know, do well by her because you are a little bitch and you're a self-hating bitch. And if you're not careful, you're going to make sure that she inherits that bullshit from you. Yeah, I'm talking to you because I know you're watching. I've been through this. All the insults, the name calling. You really need to increase your insult game. Everything you said, someone else has said that like years ago. I've had periods on this channel where I had 30, 40 people coming after me. But you know why they don't come for me anymore? I got smart. When I say welcome to another episode of Disruptive Male, where we empower men to be masculine. You know that we there's a community here. I got mods. I got people with my back. I have a community. I got peeps. It ain't just me. It's us. And that's what you ran into, bitch. And that's what you hotel bitches are going to run into because it ain't just me anymore. Oh, man. I'm like on the battlefield like a kung fu master. Like, ho, 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 ho. And they're like coming out the rafters. They're dropping down. I was like, shit. I almost gave up YouTube. Then I was like, you know what? You don't have no community. You don't have no army. But now I do. I have a community of people who bought these products, a community of people who have had success with these products. But because your lazy ass and your poor, low income ass is looking for some free or cheap versus elevating your game to where it needs to be. So you can get what you want out of life for yourself and your little girl. Because, see, I have faith in your punk ass. I'm going to shame you into becoming a better fucking man because I know you watching this shit. I am I am experienced in haters. I've got like five distinct hater profiles. <laughs> it's wild. And I know how you act and I know what you're going to do before you do it. So because I know you're watching this, do better by your child with your bitch ass. Stop going on Facebook, starting fights because you should have been using that time to make some money with your punk ass. But no, you want to fight with me because you want to compete with me because you're afraid to compete with the white man. The white man got you scared. That's why you're so full of racial anger, because if you would look up and look around, the white man catching hell. White men are killing themselves because they can't make it. But no, white supremacy, white supremacy, white supremacy. That's like on replay for your punk ass. It's done. So hopefully you do well by your daughter and stop the bullshit. And this whole challenge of if you and I were going to fight, if you saw how big I was, you would fucking run. Let's tell you a little story. I had a hater a few years ago. And I was in the airport and I saw him. And he saw me. I was about six inches taller than he was. And I head over to his ass because I wanted to touch him. I was like, I got 2500 on me. I can get bail money. I got a, an ass whooping to give. 
And I started walking toward him, and this motherfucker tripped and fell like a monster was coming after him. Like, you know, boom, oh, I'm falling down. I'm falling down. He was getting the fuck on. Bro, there ain't no way in hell you would fight me. I know this. That's why you issued it, because you know there's thousands of miles between us. And shit ain't going to never happen. You would shit your pants if I came to your town and you saw me. But anyway, so let's see. We cut the social <laughs> experiment. Uh, the other self-hate, racism, and competing with white folks. Okay, now I'm going to give y'all the Jewish blueprint. When I was in the military, I had a roommate, Derek Shop. He was Jewish. He was Orthodox Jew. He had some conflict of being in the military. And we used to have these deep philosophical conversations of race, religion. And he always said, man, you, you, you just like so. It's like, you know, we don't always agree, but I can talk to you and you don't beat me up. Another lesson, you can't talk to white people wanting them to be powerless and mute. And this is something else. And this is a social lesson for the people in the Hotel community who keep watching this and want me to change and become a bitch like they are. Power is taken, earned, or lost. It is never given. This is why all of those folks who had a seat at the table they had temporary positions, and when they were no longer needed, bye, bye, bye. When Obama left office, you notice a lot of black journalists no longer had jobs. They only had a temporary seat at the table. Once again, power is not given. It is taken, it is earned, or it is lost. That's the only way that power flows. No one just likes, here, here's power. And don't mistake Donald Trump bringing his kids into that clusterfuck as giving them power. They didn't know what to do with it. It's exploding on them. See, power is like a bomb. If you don't know what you're doing with it, it will explode on you and consume you. Power must be used judiciously. It must be. So, on with Derek, and we talked about it, and he told me, this is the Jewish blueprint. Everyone think Jews about to get money. Mm -mm. Jews are about to take over society. He told me, he said, when I was a little boy, they told me we're going to be their doctors. We're going to be their lawyers. We're going to be their dentists. We're going to be their, we're going to be high level administrative people. We're going to own stores. And whether they like us or not, they damn it, they're going to need us. We're going to become an indispensable part of society. Let me say that again. We're going to become an indispensable part of society. That's the Jewish blueprint. They're like starting businesses. At one point, Jews represent made up 3% of the population, but they donated 35% of the pol of, uh, political contributions. 35%. They know they have to buy their influence. They don't beg. They don't whine. You need a million dollars? Okay, let's, sh fuck it, let's make two. That's how Jews get down. And that's why Jews are in the position that they're in. It took them fucking 2,000 years to learn that shit. Now, the next group of people to use the Jewish blueprint are Asians. Everybody wants to fuck an Asian chick because they're so cute and dainty. Well, you know what, in the 1970s, not a lot of people want to fuck Asian chicks. Uh, the GIs that came back from Vietnam with the Asian wives, they were shunned and a lot of their family members like, why do you bring home this chink? They were nothing special. They were despised. They were just a few steps above black people. So they went and they looked at the Jewish blueprint and said, you know, we can do this. So what happened? They became our doctors. They became our lawyers. They became our pharmacists. They became indispensable parts of society. How many Asian teachers do you see? Elementary school level, high school level. You don't see that many. How many Asian professors you see? They're all over the place. How many Asian programmers you see? They're all over the place. How many Asian uh, lawyers you see? They're all over the place. How many Asian bank owners do you see? How they become an indispensable part of society. You may not like them, but you need them. Well, black folks have this whole totally fucking unrealistic ideal of society. My great grandfather, my great great grandfather was a slave many, many years ago. And because he was a slave, you should give me some reparations. Never 
going to happen. It's never going to happen. Should it happen? Yeah. Is it going to happen? No. And you know why? Because black people don't have any economic power. I know, I know. We spend $1.2 trillion. Yay. Remember what I said about the Jewish people were spending, like, giving 35% of all political contributions. They only represent 3% of the, of the uh, population. That's the economic cloud I'm talking about. I mean, you buy Nikes, you up in Macy's, you up in Neiman Marcus. Wee! So what? They'll take your money. I've said it before. White people will put their racism aside for economics all day long. Can I get a hello? You need to be about your fucking economics. Not about whining, not about bitching, not about hotepness. About your fucking economics. I got neighbors. I'm quite sure are racist. I'm very sure they're racist. But when I'm out walking the dog and they see them, they chat with me. Well, how's business going? Well, bed. I don't know. How's things at the bank? Oh, well, you know, we're, we're doing this, doing this. We may have to lay some people off. But, you know, those are the conversations at the dog, you know, where the dog's poop and stuff. They may be racist, but they respect me. I don't give a fuck if they like me. And that's something else that a lot of y'all need to let go. Well, white people don't like me. White people don't like black people. Fuck them. Make yourself so special that they need, ooh, the Jewish blueprint. They may not like you, but they need you, so they got to respect you. Imagine that. Oh, my goodness. Did we have a breakthrough? Group hug, group hug, group hug. Fuck it if they like you. You think that bitch who sent me her resume, who was all over my ass with her racist ass, you think that she wanted to work for a black person? She wanted to work in a submissive person position for me? No, she's just like, eating? Not eating. eating. <laughs> I mean, that's what it is. And when you elevate yourself to that level, because I wish there were more black people with these kind of stories, but a lot of folks are kind of like, afraid to compete with white people. They got your mind on lock. I can't do this because I'm black. Well, they ain't going to buy from me because I'm black. Bullshit. Put in the fucking work and learn what I've learned. I wish there was a million of me. Because then you would see. But that's the Jewish blueprint. Become an indispensable part of society. And it works. We've seen the Jews use it. We've seen the Asians use it. Hispanics are working on it right now. They are. You notice the wetback jokes, the 20 Mexicans in the apartment. Hey, those jokes don't, they don't make those jokes as much as they used to. They were common. Because Hispanics are starting businesses. Hispanics are marrying black women, white women. They're creating families and legacies. Hispanics are winning. You see any Hispanics out here complaining about reparations or you need to do this? They ain't complaining. They just working their asses off. But black folks, we want our reputation, represent reparations and all this other bullshit. Get your black ass to work. Be someone respectable. Be someone accountable. Build a fucking business and you'll see. So that's the Jewish blueprint. Because I am like, I'm taking a whole different tax. Hoteps, you come here with that bullshit. Or he's a coon. Or if someone called Robert F. Smith a coon. See, this is something else too. We got a lot of black folks who, well, the team is already short of warriors. And they're like, well, because you're not authentically black, you know, we and the authentic black folks we've met, we had a, a you know, we're a monthly meeting and you're out. You're no longer black. You got to go to the white side or wherever, whoever will accept you. That's where you got to go. But you, you, nah, you can't be here. Oh, but before you leave, could you write a big check? Cause we need some money. <laughs> <laughs> Woo boy. Let's see where are we on time. Cool. All right. Let's see where we are. <laughs> Speak up and get deleted. Pretty much, Ben. Pretty much. 
I got crazy stalkers. I got, but it's nothing I've been through before. I mean, I got a better game plan this time. Rats actually prefer rice. <laughs> Rudy Dog, real talk. Hater made he stuck on hamster wheel. Pretty much. AKW Beats, I, I figured that when the hate really came out because I was just like, get it out your system. Did it feel better? You need a hug? Ben, the bartender, violence is the recourse of the ignorant. I like that. Bishop Blueprint, Glendon, you do too much for people and make too much money to give trolls. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Bishop Blueprint, you have not been here. I don't have like trolls who just talk shit. No, 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 no. I have trolls who talk shit, come in, and then tack customers. Uh, years ago, I had this white woman, and she bought my courses and everything, and she actually spoke up, and she said, they're working well for me. And then, like, 30 people descended on her. They called her stupid. They said all this. They didn't care if the courses worked. That wasn't the issue. The issue was my black ass was making more money than they were. That was the issue. And they were doing everything they could to stop it. So uh, a lot of people, and you know, like I said, Bishop, you know, I'm not beating you up. You don't know what it is to be like in this seat. You know, just ignore them and leave them alone. That don't work. Not with these kind of hoes. These hoes. Yeah, hoes and bitches. That does, not, that does not work. I mean, you know, it's real easy to say, hey, just ignore them. But your ass is not getting attacked. And your tribe is not getting attacked. And your people. Blaine. He came in and said something. He started attacking him. So, trust me, that don't work. Not for me. Josh Barr, the steel ideas. <laughs> Green machine, that's funny. Uh, Bernard Lester, I'm from Nashville and I received disability. I want to start my own business. I would like to know, is there a short route to take to get, I don't know anything about free loans. I never went that route. I have no clue. <laughs> you stay on that pop of money. Prosperous musician, if it's hysterical, it's historical. I like that. That's cool. Diana Thompson, yes, if you're already complex. I know Shante Sims. I know Ro Logic Green Supreme. It is sad, but, you know, I'm I'm used to it. Ignorance only grows when it's fed. Um, we're going to disagree on that. Because one of the things that you got to understand is when you have a plan to deal with trolls that they don't see coming. Because when I mentioned that Blaine lived in Florida, because Blaine's a big dude. He went. He like he left. He left the conversation. And that's usually the best way to get them when they like, oh, I don't want to be here because I'm going to get attacked. I'm going to get beat up. Be real. I like haters. I use their ignorance and, jew and jealousy as fuel for my fire to be successful. I wish I could give you some of these, these people. Pretty much, Nasana. Randy. I'm going to say Randy. The graph and stat, I think. What do you think about Dr. Clark's Anderson blueprint for black businesses? It's actually quite good. Here's the problem with Dr. Claude's blueprint for black businesses. Most motherfuckers who listen to him just listen. They don't take action. It's solid. And what is his thing? Build economics. Build economics. Education is like third or fourth. You got to get those eco economics. Been the bartender. I found my best bars are white women. It is what it is. Pretty much Lamote. Prosperous position. It's a good sign you're getting hate as you represent truth, prosperity, and wisdom. And some folks can't handle that. I know because last time the hate came like this, because this is really, once again, I like to say thanks to my mods and everything. Because if it wasn't for them, these these live streams would be just fuckery. There would not be any, they would be coming left and right. So it's more hate, but there's a better battle plan than I had before because it was just me. I was like, good Lord, what's going on? 
pretty much AK Beats, AK Beats, Bravo. I run across people every day who think they're still in shackles. White man won't let me do it. Fuck out of here. You afraid just to admit it. <laughs> pretty much. Zola, that's the problem with uh, trying to sell the people who are on their knees in front of the plantation begging masses to buy their chains back. So I don't. Woo. No, it's a hotep, bitch. Hotep. Uh, Steve James, he opened a big can to get going when he saw you. Well, he saw Blaine. Blaine, because, you know, he went to the pages and everything. And the, the real, you know, the real, all right, let's break real. The real truth of it is it was extremely sad that he had that much self-hate and that hate for me. It was an unnatural hate. Like if I had did something to him or I did something to his family, cool, hate me. I've never met this fool. He, you know, he feels he knows me and all this other stuff. Oh, and he was hating like, you had a good thing. Now you like this fake ass alpha male bullshit. Let's talk about that. Every time I make a pivot, I have people who hate it because they feel that I am leaving them. How many of y'all know what a parasocial relationship is? It's an inverse relationship where people think they know more about you or who you are than they really do. And I was sitting there like, you acting like my ex-wife. We break up or something? So... Uh, Donny Breeze, check out Thou Shall Prosper. Actually, you know, hold on. I already know what I got to do. <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> I, I forgot. Thou Shall Prosper. I don't want the meaning. I want the book. Oh, sometimes I hate uh, spell check. Here we go. All right. Jewish rabbi wrote this book. <laughs> Thou shalt prosper. Uh, let's see. Audible free trial. Go ahead and get this book. Uh, Kindle audio. You know, I think if you sign up free for Audible, you can get a cop. You can get it for free, but you're gonna have to unsubscribe later if you don't want to keep up with that. But thou shalt prosper. Ten Commandments for Making Money, Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Jews writing books about money. What, what? <laughs> you gotta love it, man. You gotta love it. So, there it is. That's it. Logic reigns between Jews infiltrate a lot of areas wisely invest. Not like blacks who consume, consume, bitch, wine, cry, play victim. Uh, Green Machine, just like the things Claude Anderson was talking about. Yeah, Dr. Claude Anderson's plan is solid. But the thing is, the people he's talking to are not executing. There's some that are, but most aren't. I don't know, and I'm not trying to be funny, but I think that some black people have genetic embedding where their ambition, that urge, that hustle, it's just beat out of them. A lot of folks just don't have it and they're never going to get it. Uh, get that money. We've <laughs> y'all going in. Jerome Carter, immigration mindset, must come here and do pretty good because the social narrative hasn't corroded them. Keeps being that real shit. Yeah, I mean, when I had my business and I was working with these Mexicans, I was like, fuck, I got to up my game. That's what working around, being around a lot of immigrants. Uh, go to the Apparel Mart and you see a lot of these business owners. They're immigrants making that long money. All right, Alan Anderson. <laughs> pretty much, Zola, pretty much.
Yep. Uh, my phone, I have no problem sacrificing and working, just don't know what to do. Go ahead, use the coupon code, get 30 days to 2500 and execute. As a Jamaican, I'm listening to the same nonsense from my people waiting to windfall from the British. Y'all got that going down in Jamaica? Damn. Cali, Hispanics have money. They do stuff no one wants to do. Pretty much. Good Lord. Y'all uh, <laughs> Y'all off the chain here. Hold on. I just jumped. I thought I was getting kind of close to the end. Good Lord. <laughs> God. All right. Um. All right. There we are. Alan Anderson, go Google GDP list per country. And you would be mad. I did and found that black men, not black people, but black men assuming 15 cent make 50K on average. Green machine, you only need 10% of blacks like me. And going. I think they're coming. I think there's a lot of really smart and progressive black people who are doing the things that I talk about. They they got there. I mean, it, it it is what it is. You know, for every dude like that, there's like there's like a hundred haters to every person who's putting in work. That's my calculations. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's my hypothesis. I haven't quite tested it out. Be real, before white people moved to Harlem, you would see lots of abandoned buildings and stores. Then you go to Washington Heights with the uh, Dominicans and every building corner is occupied. Uh, campus, I'm working in real estate agents are buying property like it's water, cash offers and paying the asking price. They have an agenda. Uh, Apple Mac, if Hispanics get their act together, they have the potential to leapfrog the agents quick. Uh, I don't think so. Most of the Hispanics who come here do not come from Mexico. The educated, well-bred Mexicans stay in Mexico, and they're making Mexico better. We get a lot of people from Guatemala, El Salvador. Um, Asians have a huge, huge lead in tech, and that's where the world's going. So I don't, I don't know about that one. Uh, let's see. Steve James, when you get a hater, you have to bite them and shake them around and look the other haters in the eye and let them know what's going to happen to them, too. Exactly. Exactly. Troy Glover, Jewish people know economic power equals political power. Yes, yes, yes. Green Machine, I'm in trucking for money. I hate it, but the money is here and everything in your life gets moved by trucks. Everything. It's going to move by a truck, it's going to move by a train, or it's going to move by a boat. That's the only three options you have of getting your stuff. Transportation is wildly lucrative. Uh, some Jews are poor. The number of poor Jews compared to the number of Jews with money is very slim. Yeah, there are some. Not many. If you don't got no haters, you ain't about nothing. Thanks, vlogs by Callie. Hilton, why hasn't Dr. Hart built African Town yet? Glenda, you have more practical strategies than all these hope dealers combined to teach nothing practical. Uh, Dr. Claude Anderson does, but he struggles because of who he's talking to. So that's one of the problems because uh, he's serious about it. He has a good plan, but he doesn't have a lot of people that's going to execute. And that's always the problem. 
Josh Hill, what advice would you give black parents on how to steer their kids? Because everything, because saying that they can be anything versus saying what they need to do financially independent, can do to be financially independent can contradict. Uh, don't put blinders on them. Don't say, because, you know, the, the whole cop conversation, my grandmother and my mother never had that conversation with me. No one's ever had that conversation with me. And I asked my friends, I was like, anyone ever tell you how to deal with the police? And they're like, no, no one. The whole generation where no one actually said, this is what you need to do. That's some more of that hood shit. I grew up in a, you know almost rural town. I knew the police officer. There was no one saying, well, this is how you need to act in front of the police. Nobody ever gave me that fucking speech. No one. <laughs> this is the infiltration of hood culture into normal black American life. Oh, cool, DeHectrix. I didn't know that. Jerome Carter, everything is predicated on knowledge, and knowledge ain't shit if it ain't applied. That's the problem that Dr. Claude Anderson has. He does not have enough people applying his principles and teachings. Alan Adams, how do you get the disruptive prep if you spent the if you spent the hundred and fifty dollars from the thirteenth of this month up to the night which it expires? I will add you into it. So if you spend one hundred and fifty between those dates, you're good. Jewish poverty is terrible in the Ukraine. Now, one of the things that you should understand: all Jews are not the same Jews. I want you to understand this. Like the Jews in Israel, they don't claim the Jews in the Ukraine. <laughs> the Jews in Israel are some motherfuckers. I want you to go to National Geographic and I want you to look at the picture of those Jews and compare and contrast the Jews, the Russian Jews and the Ukrainian Jews. All Jews do not operate on the same level. You think they all like we one big happy family? They have infighting. They have people backstab. They have all this shit. But the Jews in Israel, which is like the centerpiece, the crown jewel of the Jewish religion, that's where everything flows. It flows from that community around the rest of the world. And if you ain't riding with them, you ain't riding with the Jews. <laughs> Came for the title. Donnie Breeze, even how they raise their kids, they celebrate education, they put their kids in a position to win at a very early age. Yes. Uh, Alan Addison, no. Um, <laughs> no. I'm, I'm on a whole nother level of stuff. Uh, Dr. Clark Anderson, I have mad respect for him. I think he's great. I, I, I don't think he would, I think he'd be afraid to come on this channel. So probably not going to ever happen. Mornich. Uh, crazy stuff, but I speak up and say thanks and picked up some great info from your courses and hit $1,000 on your challenge. Hold on, hold up. It just jumped. Good Lord. Hold on. I want to read that. Okay. Come on. Uh... All right. Crazy stuff. I speak up and say thanks, and I picked up some great info from your courses and have hit $1,000 on your challenge on top of getting my business going. Been busy, busy. <laughs> Let's give Mornart 7 a clap, a round of applause. He's executing. He's got seven more days to get another G. I've had someone the other day, he's exceeded the challenge. He's at 23. Because this is the thing. Once you hit the challenge, you keep going. You keep going. Some of you going to make five or ten grand from the half a month. Keep going. Don't stop. Uh, China business. My landlord is Jewish and I'm learning what I can watching how he moves. I like Dr. Claude Anderson, but I think the problem is his audience is too old. Could be. Alan Anderson, Tariq gets the same kind of hate. He talks about racism, but handles his business through a good model for hoteps because at least they won't be handling their business, which they're not. 
Van J. Walter, what do you think is the most single important rule for business? Ruthlessness? To be an executioner as far as business goes? I'm going to say the strongest and most powerful rule or tactic in business is love. You could be ruthless, but that's only going to get you so far. Because if you're ruthless, you're ruthless to everybody. You can't. You have nobody you can trust because you're ruthless. But if you're ruthless to a select group and you show people love, yeah, love is the most powerful thing in the world in terms of business, relationships, everything. Love. Because one of the reasons I do this, because, you know, I could be like on an island somewhere right now. I love this shit. This is fun to me. And now that I've added the element of bitch slapping, you know, hoteps and haters, it's even more fun. Michael Mack, it seems like black people don't like that feel of hustling for so long. It's meant to do something illegal. Could be. All right. Let's see. I'm pretty sure get to this. I'm half East Indian. <laughs> you know how to hustle. Logic Rain Spring Glendon. I've seen Hispanics in Linder, Texas really thriving in three hundred plus thousand dollar homes. I know oh, they they making that money. Cause, you know, once I may get into how did you look because you know, when we say Hispanics, we lump up to El Salvadorians, Guatemalans, Mexicans. Mexican people, Mexican men, Mexican women are built so different than a lot of the Mexicans or Hispanics who come to America. Like you see, we've all seen the Mexican woman that's kind of got the square SpongeBob body. If you see a real Mexican woman from Mexican City, she built like a sister. See, this is one of the things you got to understand. We use these terms Hispanics, but these people are very distinct and different and they act and move differently. Uh, Blackbird, do you believe that today's black Americans deserve to get reputation for slavery and other racial injustice the way governments, uh, the way other groups have received from the U.S. government? Mm, honestly, no. I was never a slave. I was never beat. I was never whipped. I was never castrated. I was never forced to fuck my mother to produce more capital inventory. I, I, I haven't gone through that shit, so no. Wow. Okay. Just <laughs> my mods have to be on it. All right. So once again, I'm about to go because I got to go to an appointment. But below, get it now. If you want to be part of Disruptive Mail Prep, you can buy there's three membership packages you can pay for once. You get lifetime access. And after that, it's going to go up to 250 and then I'm going to launch it next Monday. Hit the link below. You'll see the whole write up of what's going on. And tonight, the 50 percent off discount at Hustlers Kung Fu is over. Because I have did a lot of work today, so I should be able to launch this product Monday. So if you want a course or something, you want a deal, you need to get on it tonight. China Business, just want to say thanks to you. The only one that got me off my ass and got busy. Took a year before I finally made money, but it's worth it. Give China Business LLC a clap. See, we applaud effort. We applaud hustle. We applaud execution because you could think and you can absorb all these courses and stuff, but it ain't going to make you no money. It ain't going to change your life, but execution will. So congratulations. All right. So once again, the link for everything is below. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Subscribe, comment, and share this video with a whole tip.